Research tells us that we all lie on average at least once or twice a day. Some of these lies are harmless, so-called white lies. They are usually told to avoid hurting someone's feelings. For example, when we receive a gift we don't like, obviously we don't say, your gift is rubbish. Doing so would result in hurt feelings and may even result in that person not wanting to help you in the future. So in this case, lying is a good tactic. It's socially easier to tell a white lie than suffer the consequences of telling the hard truth. There are basically three types of lies. White lies fall into the first category, lying by commission. That's when you actively say something that is not true. For example, someone rings you to ask about your new job. Although you hate it, you reply, yeah, it's going well. Or your boss asks you if you have some free time on Saturday morning to come into work. Despite you having already made plans to take your son to the park in the morning, you reply, Sure, no worries, I didn't have much on anyway. These examples are fairly innocent, but lying by commission can be very deceptive. For example, I check a text message while I'm driving and, due to a moment of inattention, I smash into the back of another car. Instead of admitting my wrongdoing, I tell the insurance company that the other driver suddenly stopped. Or, I'm house-sitting for a friend and accidentally leave the front door open. When I get home, the TV and stereo have both been stolen, but I tell the police and my friend that somebody broke in. The second type of lie is lying by omission. That's where you leave out pertinent information in order to deceive. For example, an article in a newspaper claims that immigrants are taking away locals' jobs, but fail to mention that most of the jobs are low-paid, unskilled, hard-to-fill jobs that locals usually don't want to do anyway. Or, my wife asks me how my day was and I fail to tell her that I bumped into my ex and ended up having lunch with her. My wife may even have rang me while I was having lunch, but I told her that I couldn't speak because I was in an important meeting. And the third type of lie is the one that I will be focusing on today. It's where you actually don't tell a lie, you only tell a truthful statement, but one that's used to deceive. This is known as paltering. Remember when Bill Clinton famously said, there is not a sexual relationship between him and former White House intern Monica Lewinsky? It was found out later that he had actually had a sexual relationship months before making that statement, but technically he wasn't lying. He wasn't still in the relationship with Miss Lewinsky at the time of making the statement, but obviously it's still misleading and is classified as paltering. Here's a real life example from my life. One of my friends had really nice looking eyebrows. We used to jokingly claim that he must pluck them. He often would say, I promise you, I've never plucked my eyebrows. But one day, I was walking past a little manicurist downtown and I saw him up the back of the shop getting his eyebrows waxed. Technically, he hadn't lied, but obviously he was trying to deceive us and didn't want us to know the full story. Politicians are famous for paltering. They will often be asked questions by eager journalists trying to get the full story behind a piece of policy. For example, the journalist might ask, Mr Smith, are you stating that your party members have never taken bribes from local council? In which Mr Smith replies, My party is full of honest, hard-working members of this community who only have one common goal, to help the Australian people. Nice comment, but doesn't answer the question. Sure, maybe his party has lots of honest politicians, but that doesn't mean that there aren't a few bad eggs who have taken bribes from local council. How about the ethics of lying? Some people might say white lies are fairly innocent. That is, they are not intended to harm anybody. They don't actually cause any harm. The lie is usually about something morally trivial, and they generally aren't told so often that they devalue what you say. However, the person being lied to is deprived of information that they might find useful. For example, if an interviewer doesn't tell me why I didn't get the job and only gives me pleasantries, then I'm in no better position to succeed in my next job interview. Secondly, white lies could result in the person telling the lies finding it easier to lie in the future, and it may come to blur the boundary between white lies and more culpable ones. It could result in weakening the presumption that lying is wrong and may make it easier for a person to tell lies that are intended to harm someone, or make it easier to avoid telling truths that need to be told. Of course, if lies are left unchecked, if everyone in society is allowed to lie without fear of punishment, then people would not be able to trust one another. Society is built on trust. If it wasn't for trust, how could we possibly purchase a food that we didn't make? For all we know, the baker could have spiked the loaf of bread with arsenic. The petrol we put in the car could be watered down. The free-range goat meat that we buy might be dog. We need trust, and a lot of it, for society to function. It's been found that most people want to tell the truth if given the option. However, some situations call for us to not tell the truth, or not tell the whole truth. 
In one study, people were asked to take on the role of a person selling a used car over the internet. They were told if they successfully sold the car, they would receive a bonus. They were also told that the car had a troubled history with multiple mechanical issues. One group was given the option to outright lie about the history of the car, or to tell the truth. The other group were allowed to either palter or tell the truth. In both situations, telling the truth would result in a much lower chance of selling the car. Outright lying had the highest chance of success, but was seen as the less ethical. 55% of people in that group chose to lie in order to receive the bonus. In the other group, 71% of participants chose to palter in order to sell the car, even though it was obviously deceptive behaviour. For example, they could have said things such as, the car is currently in great condition, or it's passed all its safety inspections and is fit for driving. These all might be true statements, but they fail to mention the car's troubled history. So why do people choose to palter over outright lying? The answer is probably a psychological one. We all like to think of ourselves as honest and trustworthy. Being an honest person is seen as being a good person. When we palter, we tend to feel like that we are not lying. My friend that said that he never plucks his eyebrows was being 100% honest in his eyes, even though it was later found out that he pays someone else to wax them. The point is, he wanted us to think that his eyebrows were naturally neat and tidy, but he used paltering to try to deceive us. We are all social creatures just trying to make our way in the world. Of course, we want to make our lives as trouble-free as possible. If we have to tell a few white lies here and there to make sure that people don't hate us, then that's a small price to pay. As long as we don't lie to manipulate others or to purposely mislead, then I guess the occasional white lie doesn't hurt anyone. But we have to be very careful not to get into a habit of lying. Gambling addicts, for example, start with a few white lies here and there until one day they're lying to their bosses about close family members dying, or lying to their family about being robbed on the street. Lies can very quickly turn into damned lies. So to summarise, paltering is still deception. You may be telling a truthful statement, but you are still trying to deceive another person. And that's what this all comes down to. Lying is deception. Paltering is deception. If we can't trust one another, then who can we trust?